Artwork, critiques, Photoshop files and reference sheets are all available on my Patreon. Well, hello there, you delicious things. I hope you're all doing bloody well. My name's Mikey, and welcome along to another episode of Draw with Mikey. Episode 149. Hope you're all doing fine. This, of course, is the super casual midweek series, um, although it's a super irregular upload pattern on the channel at the moment. The whole point of this is it's my opportunity to touch bases with you guys. So if you've got any questions, thoughts, feelings or feedback, get your sweet selves into the comment section below. With any luck, I'll be reading for it next episode around. Really, this is just how I like to touch bases with you lot if you're not part of the live streaming crowd on Twitch. And um, because of the DWM series at the moment, a sort of uh, hitting these benchmarks. Uh, last episode, 148, was a great big thank you for 950,000 subs. This episode is a great big thank you, slightly bigger thank you, for 975,000 subscribers on the channel. I do not deserve it, uh, but I will accept it. Thank you very much. Your guys and the support is exactly what makes this kind of stuff happen, which is super weird. And the whole point of doing it this way was just so that we could line up episode 150, the big 150. Um, to go in line with us uh, eventually hitting ideally one milli uh, on the channel. But you never know if YouTube, they might shut me down before then. So guys, get subscribing quick. <laughs> you never know, kids. Um, but yeah, we're kind of vibing along. Um, the kind of growth on the channel has still been going, surprisingly. I'm so grateful for that, um, especially when there's not been much content here. I've been very busy working on the content for uh, the four other YouTube channels at the moment and the live streaming on Twitch, as well as some other projects over the holidays and so on. Um, so that's kept me very busy. But now don't hold a gun to my head. But officially, content is now starting again on this channel. Now, don't worry, guys, I'm going to be reading through the comment section and touching bases of you people. But <laughs> there's always this blurb in the beginning where I have to just offload a massive update of information to you guys. So, hey, you're all so patient. If you're listening along, make sure you've got yourself a lovely cup of tea. I strongly recommend it. And you are, of course, very, very handsome. Thanks for joining in. Get in the comments. Get in the comments. So basically, sorry, that's just a reference to uh, um, actually, which I'm not even going to describe any more than just the name. If you know it, you know it. And if you don't, you probably have a life. So well done. Um, but basically, yeah, we're going to be vibing up to the one milli. I do um, the odd video from time to time just to touch bases with you guys, let you know that we're all still vibing along here. Um, make sure you're following me on Twitter. I'm always, always vibrantly tweeting over there. Um, but now kind of officially... We start work again on this channel. As you know, I've got a whole load of more tutorials that I want to get done. We've got plenty of fan arts to be working our way through, as well as some other slightly larger dojin ideas. Great news, my friends. Patreon is all caught up. So uh, come by belong in Patreon if you want to. That's where we make all of this possible. Everything is up to date. There is no more Patreon catch up to be worrying about. I'm still organizing a few refunds for some of you boyos, and I'm still trying to get in touch with some real old schoolers uh, about refunding some bits for them as well because they were supporting ages ago and content was really behind. Um, but it's really weird when you're trying to give money back to people, they suddenly become really hard to get in contact with. I've got like a whole spreadsheet of you lot. But in terms of um, uploading stuff, that is a weight off my chest. Thank you for your patience, guys. I now fully endorse my own Patreon again. <laughs> Come get involved. Um, and also, we finished JoJo's part four which means we need to start watching uh, Diamond is Unbreakable, even though the next series of JoJo's has already come out beyond that. By the way, guys, if you've got any recommendation for books, TV shows, anime and video games, do let me know. I'm currently playing Dark Souls on Twitch, currently reading the Broken Empire trilogy, Prince of Thorns, King of Thorns, etc. Not really watching any anime at this very moment. I still haven't even started Arcane, um, but that's about the kind of the long and the short of it in a really quick nutshell. Basically, I'm really excited to be back and uh, recording along with you guys. Uh, so if I seem super rusty, remember, this is the super rough around the edges series. Basically, it's my opportunity to maybe do a longer form piece of artwork that you get to watch on a screen whilst catching up with you guys. Long story short, no editing. I ramble. I have no idea what I've said. I've got no short term memory. Um, let's all vibe along. Yes, in the last episode, I kind of just wanted to share a little bit of experimentation that I always kind of like to do with my artwork. I'm always just trying to see if there's something new that we can do with an art style or a little bit of changes that we can make. And last time we did a Sisters of Battle, a Games Workshop uh, character, and I kind of did more of a painty render method as opposed to the sort of 
uh, cleaner anime lines that we tend to fall into with uh, the way we do things on the channel. And so in this particular episode, on screen, we're doing Genshin Impact Shen He fan art. And this was another big experiment in that I started with no line art at all, just a vague idea in my head of the overall shape and form of the character. And then you'll see that I just splatted it down all on one layer as just flat, vague color shapes. Uh, no details, no correct anatomy, like it takes me ages to fix the hips and everything. Um, but just blob down the color. Then I sketched over the color and then I recolored to match the sketch. It's like form indicates line, which then redraws the form. Um, just to sort of see what does this method do for my artwork? How long does it take me to get something done if I'm illustrating in this method? All of that kind of stuff. If you've ever got any questions, of course, of the art side of things in the comments here or just jump on to twitch.tv forward slash Mikey Mega Mega, where, of course, I'm vibing along live and doing any whole thing. So basically... Again, we've got some completely different ways of addressing the artwork, and it's always nice to mix it up, I find. I do like to just kind of get dived in and see what changes we can make. Anyway, let me just have a quick sip of water over here, you delicious things. Mmm. <clears throat> Lovely. And uh, let's dive into the comments below. Oh, yeah, just before I do, one more thing. Um, a lot of you guys have been asking after... Hey, Mikey, if I don't care about Twitch whatsoever, but I still want to see your real-time artwork, how can I do that? Well, I say, very handsome question. Um, I've now got a VODs channel on YouTube as well. So if you're subbed to me on Twitch, you can just see all the videos there. Um, now I've worked out how to separate the music so that the music doesn't get recorded, which basically, if you know anything about YouTube, means um, I can import the live streams here into YouTube without the video getting blocked worldwide because it recognizes songs. So... We now have Mega Mega, wait, Mikey Mega Mega VODs channel. I'll put a link below. Basically, um, it's all of the full length video game Let's Plays and all of the upcoming full length art streams for a bit. It won't be the full collection. The older stuff archived is just for patrons on Patreon and that's got music included. So that's hosted differently. Um, but we can put a few of them going forward on this channel as well if Twitch isn't your thing. Um, and uh, yeah, so check that out if you just want to see the long real time ramblings of everything that we're up to. Okay, I think that's addressed a few of the things. Now, let me get my sweet self into the comment section. Again, guys, recommend anything to me. I want to know about the good stuff. The reason why we're playing uh, Dark Souls at the moment is because we've got this really tight February window of amazing games coming up. I need to complete Dark Souls ASAP so that we can start and complete Horizon Zero Dawn in time for Horizon Forbidden West. I think that's coming out on the 13th. And we need to play that really, really hard so that we can stop in time for Elden Ring to be out. Uh, also something, something Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. Don't even ask me how we're going to fit that in. Very busy times. Anyway, like I was just interrupting myself over, let's get into the comment section. Let's calm down, take a nice breath. Let's relax and see what's going on with you lovely people. Uh, Gallifrey Archive says, Hooray! The king has returned. Perhaps you could do a thick female Sauron or something Lord of the Rings related. Wow. <laughs> I actually kind of like that suggestion. Uh, one second. The Nazgul was like a, a knife and Sauron's like a fork, if you imagine their helmets. Um, Sauron thick? Uh, yo, Gallifrey Archives, thank you very much for saying. One thing I get minor guilt over, um, especially, well, not now, because the tutorials and the regular uploads are coming back, well done, everybody. Clap, clap, clap. Um, but whenever I was just doing the odd episode and the odd Mikey Mega Mega video, loads of people in chat are just like, yeah, he's back. Finally, he's been back. We've been waiting. Daddy's come back from the cigarettes. He got the milk. And I'm just like, ah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> You're not going to see another video for another month. I'm so sorry. But uh, no, we're vibing now. So um, Gallifrey Archives, Thick Sauron. Thick Sauron. Now, we have talked about my plans to do a Yaoi Hentai <laughs> Lord of the Rings for no other reason, and it's going to rub people the wrong way. With uh, Gandalf for Thick. Uh, you shall not pass this mighty thick ass and other such things. Um, so yeah, fix Sauron. I'm weirdly into it. Okay, good. Good first comment to start off the day with. Supreme Emperor Mitten says, uh, the Emperor sends his blessings for creating a very bountiful sister. Yo, thank you so much. You like that fixed sister of battle? Oh, yes. For the Emperor, brother. Yes. And uh, Spock, sorry about that. Spock says... Uh, the title alone made me laugh when I saw it in my recommendations. Yeah, it's always a case of... Uh, Games Workshop aren't very chill with their IP sharing. They're a little bit like Disney like that, but hey, what are you going to do? They, it does belong to them. 
these kind of videos you continue to say box are really nice especially the ones with the kind of uh not so youtube friendly pc humor. <laughs> yeah. i still haven't quite fully converted my content to match exactly what youtube wants mate they uh this completely randomly we did a uh, monster hunter rise fan art of uh is it renoa and hinoa uh the shrine maidens eight months ago i did that video I got an email, I shit you not, I got an email a couple of days ago, and they were just like, <gasps> how dare you, Mikey? We have age-restricted this video, and we've removed the thumbnail. Ugh, disgusting, no advertising. And I was just like, living my life, completely forgot, haven't thought about that video in months. I was like, oh, okay, YouTube. Every now and then, they just randomly just get in touch and just like, hey, Mikey, 14 months ago, you made a video, and I just want you to know that we think it's disgusting today, and uh, we've removed the thumbnail on adverts. And I'm just like, oh, mate, I'm so over you. Anyway, long story short, I remade the thumbnail and just, just blurred it out and said some stuff. Anyway, YouTube's a nightmare. But hey, if I was making super friendly content, then what are you going to do? I could dye my hair green and just shout and do loads of clickbaity stuff aimed at actual, actual children. Um, but that's just not the kind of stuff that I care for. I can't actually stand it. Hey, isn't um, <clears throat> talking about having to dye your hair a different colour because your content's aimed at children so young they can't tell you apart unless your hair's actually green? Didn't Jazza recently do a couple of, uh, my boy Jazza, a couple of videos um, aimed at ZHC? Jazza's taking shots in the YouTube forum. Fascinating, fascinating. Um, I haven't even seen them. But whatever the content is, I'm sure not many people are surprised. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Anyway, your boy don't drama around here. This is why I don't have any friends on the internet. I just solo it and then just try to keep my head under the radar. Um, Heather says, I've missed the rambling. Hey, well, Heather, thank you so much. Um, I haven't even continued your sentence, but I've just realized I keep shouting really loudly. And I think it's just because it's been such a long time since I've done this. I'm very excited to be recording and uh, listening to your comments. So I'm going to take a deep breath. I'm going to do a little bit of self-control. Listen to this. <sighs> oh, that's nice, isn't it? Let's have some water. I do love what doing what I do and touching bases with you guys in this series, so I get a bit excited. There we go. Heather says, I've missed the rambling series so much. My year has been great, all things considered. I finally got married. Oh, yo! After postponing for COVID and we're having a baby in December. Oh, heck! Yo, congratulations! Hey! Um, I've taken a long hiatus from digital drawing, and I've been really enjoying oil painting. Mmm. Oil painting is a completely different breed. Don't breathe those fumes, Heather, if you've got a baby on the way. Come on now. If you uh, fall asleep next to an oil painting or a tire fire, you don't wake up. My digital approach is too precise and calculated, so I'm hoping to learn to go with the flow better by doing a new medium. I love your videos, Mikey. Still killing it. Heather, that's very kind of you to say. Also... Yeah, you're going to have to get used to that. Precise and calculated is going to go out the window when your baby comes. I'm so sorry. Like, uh, in fact, having said that, the baby's probably here because December is long gone. <gasps> did you name it Mikey? I bet you did. Oh, yo, congratulations. Uh, Syra Tsukiano says, I would love a tutorial about anime armor on females and males. Fantasy and sci-fi specifically, that would be wonderful. Syra, that was a great suggestion. That is actually already kind of on my list. But um, that was more in terms of um, uh, how to draw materials and reflections. So one very specifically about how to draw armor that makes a character look sturdy and thick and heavy and well protected versus uh, not the, we're getting a bit more woke with it now. But let's say how to draw female anime armor if you are a uh, character illustrator from the 80s where it's less about obvious protection and more about accentuating curves for ladies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll do some stuff. We'll do some stuff. Yannick Linson says, hi, Mikey. Hello there, Yannick. How are you doing? Great to see you're back. <laughs> Yikes. And I just want to let you know, hey, lovely to be back. We're back now. Now we're back. And I just want to, to let you know that I love listening and watching your DWMs whilst I get my own drawings done. Keep up the amazing work. Hey, thank you, man. And love from the Netherlands. Yo, do you know what? The more I learn about the Netherlands, the more I like them. In fact, is the key three, isn't it? Sweden, the Netherlands, and Norway. Sweden's a bit like, yeah, we get it. You're great. Well done. But then like Norway and the Netherlands, it's just like, hey, you guys are actually pretty chill and pretty sound. <laughs> I think I like you guys. No, we don't play favorites. Still, I'm not a xenophobe. Uh, Quiet Vale says, I've been having a dry spell in art lately. Oh, Quiet Vale, it happens, dude. Don't worry too much. But thanks to some of your videos, I've had a sudden urge of creative energy to pick up a pencil. Not digital. <gasps> this 
yo, sometimes you guys come in themes. The second comment where you guys have actually come away from digital to do some IRL stuff. I don't blame you. I'm gagging to get back into my sketchbook at the moment, but all of my big game plans involve the digital medium. Maybe it's a result of 2021, which I am willing to call an absolute write-off. That year, just like, I mean, 2020 was like kind of really just sucked, but I feel like 2021 was just such a big waste of everybody's time. <laughs> anyway, look, anyway. Uh, hey, no, what I mean to say is 2022, this is the year. We finally do it, guys. All those plans I had in 2020, we're going to finally do them. Late 2022, good solid 2023. Um, in fact, am I missing something? Now, obviously, this is a very serious thing and much love to anyone who's been affected by COVID. But I feel like back in 2020, everybody was like, yo, we've got to be really strict. We're going to do this, this and this. Look after each other. Be safe. And then in 2021, people were just like, OK, we, you know, we're going back into lockdown again and we're, we're going to try to keep safe, but we need to also live our lives. But no, 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 keep safe. And now in 2022, I feel like the official stance is just like, oh, just wash your hands. Mate, I need to get on with my life. Look, we're all going out again. <laughs> just just wash your hands. Try to take a aspirin. I don't care. I don't care anymore. <laughs> we're all really sick of being able, not able to do stuff. But um, maybe this is the new future. Maybe this is how it's going to be forever. And we're just going to be one of those generations who are just like, I remember when you could touch strangers. And people are like, yeah, all right, Grandma, go back into the home. Um, so anyway, what I'm trying to get at is 2022 is looking up. Wow, I just predicted that it wasn't looking up. But my overall theme was, hey, this is the year. Um, anyway, uh, as always, much love. Quiet Veil, right back at you as well. Bingus Lingus, I like your name, says, I'm actually so grateful for one day having found your channel. Oh, hey, cheers. Um, you helped me so much in my art journey. You've made me want to practice art and take art actually serious. Oh, for serious. I've actually learned most of my art skills from you, and I'm really inspired to draw. Thank you so much. Bingus Lingus, that is a lovely comment. Thank you very much for saying. And yeah, all jokes aside, art is lovely. It's therapeutic. It takes your mind off troubles. I say this every single time because it never stops being true. And uh, yeah, it's just a way to kind of focus what you're up to and just uh, forget the fact that the world's slowly falling apart in a fireball nightmare. So yeah, uh, get into the drawing. I'd recommend it to anyone. Now, not everyone's going to love drawing. Uh, I'm not going to force everyone to do it, but I will force everybody to at least try it once. You never know until you try it. Hashtag it's my birthday. Hashtag I bought lube. Uh, Drip Tide Gaming says, always enjoy listening to a dude talk to his community for an hour whilst I work on my own art. Thank you, thank you. Uh, right back at you, DTG. Thank you so much for saying, dude. Community? I wish. <laughs> you guys are my... I, no, I, <laughs> I mean this in the nicest possible way. But I, And this is a, probably a reaction to doing a lot, lot of live streaming on Twitch these days. I tend to refer you to you guys less as a community and more as just my favourite arseholes. <laughs> You're my arseholes and my favourite ones. No, 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 you don't deserve that. Each and every one of you is a human being with your own thoughts and struggles and lives. But you might have the arseholes. Uh, Octoboob says it's awesome to see how your art style is constantly evolving. Uh, yeah, I'd, so I don't know. I don't know what it's evolving into, Octoboobs. I'd say definitely that I'm always experimenting. I'm still trying to keep on that, like, you know, busty anime spicy vibe. But every now and then you have to just try something else, otherwise you go a little bit loopy. And I think it's very important to, you know, from time to time, push yourself outside of your comfort zone and just see what happens if you try this or see what happens if you try that. Um, not just because, you know, this is how you grow and develop better, but just because actually you can get a bit sick of your own work, if that makes sense. And uh, it's just another method to keep you interested, just as much as it is a good method to actually grow and develop. So it's a, it's a double-sided win. Um, yeah, if you can get around to doing it. An Ominous says, I'm still waiting on Helltaker. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's on the list. Um, we'll put that behind a sexy Sauron. Uh, also, I've got like five different ring jokes on the tip of my tongue, and I've just swallowed all of them. Um, I've also been a huge help for the stages of my art hobby, and recently I've been rekindling my passion for art. Thanks for everything, and I hope you reach one million soon. An Ominous, hey, thank you very much. Yeah, when we hit that milli milli, we'll do a uh, draw with Mikey episode 150. We'll make it live here on YouTube. Just got, I've still been sitting on these tablets. We've got drawing tablets for giveaways. It's going to be a whole fun evening. When it comes around, when it comes around, no stress. I still have so many other things to do. We've got the Warhammer channel. We've got Film Crown. We've got the VODs live streaming stuff. We've got the Megaverse stuff, which is all the clips 
funny content memes, book readings as well. Yo, if you like these deep, rich, Mikey Mega Mega tones and wish that they were reading from your favourite literature, come and subscribe to the Megaverse, where book readings are now in action, starting with June, the greatest science fiction of all time. Hmm, did I sell it? Did I sell it, Mama? Uh, Super Jordina says, hello, Mikey. Hello there, Super Jordina. I've been watching you recently this year. Oh, shit. Uh, so I'm kind of new to this. Well, welcome on in. I've been trying to learn how to draw different poses or poses at high and low angles. Uh, and I tried it all out first and it looked awful. And then I watched your art tutorials and it looks so much better. Hey, I'm glad. I'm not really used to drawing these kinds of poses, but you've made my comfort zone. Uh, you made me get out of my comfort zone and try new things. Yo, we were just talking about that. Awesome. Thank you. And keep up the great work. Yes. Uh, one more thing. Have you seen an anime film called A Silent Voice? If you haven't, then I highly recommend it. It's one of the best romance dramas. <clears throat> I think I've heard somebody talk about this. No, I haven't seen it. Sorry. Oh, I've just selected your entire comment. I'm just trying to get one sentence. Yo, I'm going to stick that on my notepad file. Silent voice. I keep getting confused between uh, Erased and An Other or something like that. One of them is a guy kidnapping kids anime. And one of them is, just in case you thought it was IRL, obviously. And one of them is, um, there's too many people in the classroom. So one of them's dead and everybody else dies until you find out who's dead. It's really weird, but it was great. Silent voice, though. I'll put that on the list. What is, um, oh my God. I've just remembered I was supposed to be playing the Castlevania game so that I could get around and actually watch the Castlevania Netflix thing. Also, I was going to rewatch Cowboy Bebop because of the Cowboy Bebop thing. Do you remember... When people were excited that that was getting made, were they excited? Did it look like crap? And then um, it came out on Netflix, and I don't think people loved it that much. Man, in my day, Cowboy Bebop had Keanu Reeves attached to it, and it was going to be a movie. Do you remember when they used to make movies? Now you get Marvel films or nothing. Oh, God, I'm so old. I'm, I'm just going on little moans. It's just hit me now. It's just, those, those 37 years have just hit me. I'm getting old um but yeah um i'll add it to the list thank you very much random 64z says aloha mikey aloha random how you doing man saludos and ketel i love your content i've been following you for 11 months thank you for all the art lessons you're welcome there are more tutorials to come we need to be doing a number of key things asap and adam calloway says i'm so glad you're back the king of tutorials and the best enabler <laughs> Stroke teacher on YouTube. Okay, that's. I'd rather be an enabler than a feeder, whatever that means. Um, not that the rest of it is bad, says E, just for letter E, but I liked how the shading looked at 6 minutes 30 in a video. It reminded me of an oil painting. Oh, yeah, one sec. Can I click that? <laughs> ah, yes. Well, do you know what? Although this is digital, when we were doing the painting render method on the Sister of Battle, there was a point where I was adding in colors and then essentially doing the equivalent of putting a wash over everything to push everything back down and then repaint on top of it to kind of balance how I was pulling out the saturation of the piece. Not a crazy bad thing to do from time to time. If you're halfway through painting something, put a multiply layer, light one, uh, wash straight all over it, push everything back down, a bit less saturated, tiny bit darker, and then slowly pull through your colors again. And it can be a really good way of just kind of rebalancing what you're doing with your levels in your artwork. Anyway, let me sip this. <clears throat> it's relatively warm for a spring winter day, so I'm sipping at the water. Adam Calloway says, uh, I'm, oh, no, no, I just read that. That was the enabler one. Oh, yeah, sorry, I'm on the wrong tab now. Oh, let's go back. Got you. Millie Wiggs says, damn, our boy was holding out on us. He knows his painting fundamentals. <gasps> I know some. I know some, Milliwig. I've read some things, but not all of them. And uh, Autumn Leaf says, I'm so glad I started painting the sisters again. Oh, yo, are you a Warhammer enthusiast? I'll have to pop in and show off the army. Yo, get involved. Matt, I love seeing people's Warhammer stuff. Uh, Marcus says, hey, Mikey. Hello there, Marcus. I've recently turned 18. Happy birthday. One sec. Cover your ears, kids. <coughs> That's what you get. Well done. Um, I've got my own drawing tablet and I can follow along with your tutorials and relate to your issues and art quite easily. Ah, my complaining and moaning is starting to make sense. The mark of an artist. I just wanted to know the size of a canvas that you recommend on a portrait scale. Keep up the amazing work and improvements. Marcus, um, you want as much as you can get away with without it slowing down your computer in a perfect dream world. But an um, A4 size 300 DPI can be really comfortable for most work. Um, I go for a free size canvas at 300 DPI 
um, which gets me exactly what I want again, but I can in kind of inflate it a little bit if I want to use it for printing, fit in more pixels. Um, and there's plenty of people who are literally just like, I use 3000 by 5000 pixels and a few people who will just try to keep it to the 2K and 4K uh, formats of their monitors and stuff, depending on the kind of work they're producing. But my default for everything that I do is a free size canvas, 300 dots per inch. Riley Dremf says, all right, all right, Riley. Um, I've been drawing OCs for a webcomic and I've been working on for, oh, I've been working on it for a few years and your tutorials have been helpful for thinking about anatomy whilst doing so. Hey, you're welcome, dude. I sometimes go through phases where I can construct something, but if I actually want a person doing something naturally, like a picture, I want to just put a picture of a person putting some toast in a toaster or doing the washing up, it's always super unnatural in my head in terms of how I'm composing it. And I just find grabbing a reference picture, even if I'm not copying a reference picture, but seeing someone in real life doing the act and then applying the construction building block methods to recreating that of my art. Because sometimes I'm just like, how do people stand? How do people stand doing stuff? And then you just have to look at a person and just like, oh yeah, I remember. I remember real life. Um, but dude, keep up the amazing work and your own improvements as well. I'm pleased to hear it, man. Uh, also, um, please do any iteration of Lance, Lancer, Lancer Artoria from FGO. Now that's fate. I don't know what the go stands for, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But a lot of your hot work was absolutely incredible for the fate series, especially the one that I saw. Uh, D Addis eighteen oh three says, "Hey, Mikey. Hello there, D Addis. How you doing, man? Uh, what's your thoughts on Photoshop layers? Like, how much is too much, or should I? Should there be separate layers for separate entities on the character? P.S. Glad to have the tea sipping dad back on the scene. I'll be your daddy. Yo, that is a question of questions. <sighs> layers in Photoshop. I'd rather talk about NFTs. <laughs> layers in Photoshop. The real hot topic in the art community. Now, me, when I'm doing the clean anime style, I kind of tend to uh, reach somewhere in the range between 300 to 400 layers because of how I do things. Um, however, uh, if you actually want to be a bit more organized and not have a four gigabyte Photoshop file, yes. Um, there is uh, a number of ways you can actually get some good separation. Now, I'm talking just about the clean anime method and the way I do it. So depending on your own art style, this might be a bit different. But what is not a bad idea is to um, maybe like export some flat copies of your different stages of your artwork, but um, collapse all the basic sets. Once you've got your thumbnail down, collapse it and just keep the thumbnail. Um, once you've got your kind of sketch from that thumbnail down that you've been working on and erasing and trying different things on different layers, you can collapse that. And then you've got your sketch layer. Uh, and then you've got your clean line art layer. And if you're anything like me, clean, like clean line art layer, especially when you've got some flowing curves that are cutting over different lines for loads of like animated hair and stuff like that, that might be a shed load of different layers so that you can put down the right kind of line art curve and move it into the right position without it being affected by the other line work so that you can erase a certain set of lines without messing up the line that you put on and all that sort of stuff. But when you're done, when you've done all that, yeah, you can probably collapse all that into a, just one clean line art layer. So you've got these different stages as you go. And then when you've also got your flat layers for the different sections, flat layer for skin, flat layer for hair, flat layer for eyes, flat layer for background, etc., depending on how much detail and items of clothing are on your characters, those flat layers in the way that I work, tend to essentially become clipping masks. And then everything that I paint for skin is clipped to the skin layer. Everything I paint for hair is clipped to the hair layer. And you can just, you know, group them into folders and eventually flatten them if you want to. Um, I'd probably keep the groups, but also save a flat copy. Um, so you can kind of go like that and actually manage your Photoshop file. That, the reason why I'm talking about this so much is because this is the format I'm trying to remember to do because I often give away my Photoshop files in uh, part of the Patreon packs. Um, and I'm trying to give them to you guys in a format that's accessible. However, what I tend to forget is that, and uh, you end up getting my massive Photoshop files of 400 layers where you can see every single individual decision and brushstroke I made throughout the 26 hours it takes to put it together. Um, so yeah, I go big. I like lots of layers. I don't even name them because I'm not a psychopath. I know incredible artists who will often collapse their entire work down to one or two layers. Literally, they'll be six hours deep and they'll just collapse it and then just keep on working. Uh, people like that, I don't know what's going on inside their heads. Um, they've got shit going on. They just want to see the world burn. They don't have souls. They're not good people. If you see someone collapse 50 layers of their work straight down into one thing without a care in the world, without saving another copy or like taking a screenshot of some of their work in progress, then sleep lightly, okay? Just keep one eye open because 
they're the weirdos. So keep your layers going if you want. No one's going to judge you. Um, if you collapse too much, you might look like a freak. But again, who's going to know? If you're just working at home, maybe it's just our little secret. Uh, uh, ooh, um, Chibuki Ezekude. I'm not saying your name correctly, but I love that you're here. Your line art never ceases to amaze me. Hey, thank you very much, dude. Uh, Chibbers, my boy Chibbers, thank you, dude. Um, I've been a long time subscriber, but I don't really comment much. Hey, that's absolutely fine, man, but lovely to have you. I just wanted to say that you're one of the reasons that I continue to pick up my pencil. Well, hey, that's that's private time and that's your business. Keep up chatting more amazing art, Mikey, dude. Thank you so much for the kind words. I hope you have a lovely, lovely and productive day with your work. Oh, I'm tripping over my own tongue. Let's have some more water. One sec. These are the bits, of course, that if this was a professional show, I would edit out. But instead, hear that slosh, slosh, slosh? What's that? <sighs> ah. Okay, well, I sort of leaned into it a little bit, but hey. Uh, Frost Uwu says, I'm glad that you're back to making content for the channel. I was hoping to ask if you could do more tutorials for drawing. Dude, your wish is my command. Absolutely, that is, that is what we uh, are going to be doing. Every time I do a fan art, YouTube freaks out. So I might as well just keep sticking with the tutorials. I'll keep the fan arts for my uh, own stuff. And Terry Johnson says, I love your content. Yo, thank you, Terry. Um, I just picked up drawing and your videos have been really helpful. That's what they're here for. Thank you very much for saying that. That feedback is super encouraging. Ariel uh, Laguing says, I've missed you so much, Mikey. You too, Ariel. You too. I love hearing your voice while drawing. We'll come hang out live on twitch.tv forward slash Mikey Mega Mega. Where I just do the live drawing. Guys, again, gentle reminder. Somebody remind me to put the link below. Uh, Mikey Mega Mega VODs. Uh, so if you want the long drawing stuff, I'm now importing it into YouTube now that I've found out how to separate the music. All available for you delicious people. Come get involved. And Keshav Kalnor says, good to see you're back, Mikey, with some lovely DWM videos. Yes. Welcome on in. Here we've got Shen He today. We're working on her in a completely different pattern, and it's all vibing along nicely. Uh, Malu 2 Bravo says, this is epic. Hey, thank you, man. I wish you had a link to download a high resolution. Um, you can get a medium lowish resolution on Twitter, maybe. No, it's, it's really low. Um, if you're subbed on Twitch, you can get access to my Discord where we put the art there. Um, or if you're subbed on Patreon, you can do the same thing. And you, excuse me, Burp, you also get it there. But don't worry, it's not like a whole Discord community that you guys are missing out on. It's just a place where I upload my art. And it's the exact same equivalent of being on one of the lower tiers of Patreon. So there's no exclusivity as much as there is just two different ways to access all of that sort of stuff if you're into it. Joey G says, I don't know why the Draw of Mikey series is one of the most helpful drawing tips for me. Yo, it's because we cut to the real questions. I can tell you whatever I think would be good for you guys to know. But if there's actually something really specific you guys want to hear about, this is the place to ask me all about it. Yo, come get involved. Come get involved. Uh, guys, what book series am I going to read after the... Um, uh broken empire trilogy like i'm coming towards the end of the last book and i've really enjoyed them because it's it's set in a completely different type of world compared to what i'm used to it's uh this might sound mental but it's more akin to adventure time than it is anything else that i've generally read in literature um but what's next like mikey likes this kind of dark fantasy interesting kind of stuff but i don't know what to uh should i just start rereading game of thrones if I start Game of Thrones from the first book about now, by the time I get all the way to the end of the published series, maybe George R.R. R. will have released the next book is for me, question mark? Hmm. You know, I might do that. Mm. Okay, I'm going to think about that separately. Although we need to watch a lot of anime. We've got a lot of catching up to do. <gasps> I have recently watched an anime. I've just remembered. I've just remembered. Um, One of my uh, mods recommended... Uh, my Dress Up Darling. I've just watched the first two episodes of that. And you know what? Oh, shit. I think there's more. Okay, look, it's all come flooding back to me. I think there's some more Demon Slayer that I need to be watching as well. Apparently, there's another hot Demon Slayer waifu of some sort that I need to get my hands on to. Um, my Dress Up Darling. Uh, I really liked it simply because it's got this kind of... Uh, is the term Gyaru? It's got this Gyaru kind of character. You know, a Japanese girl with lots of trinkets and um, uh, fake tan and like blonded hair and that kind of schoolgirl look except like um she's super owned open-minded and friendly and just likes the idea of people following their own passions so she meets the guy who's obviously the doll maker uh and she's just like hey you clearly have this thing that you like doing good for you 
I'm really into cosplay and uh, I really want to kind of like get going and do something like that. And it was just like, it was so open-minded and wholesome of both of the characters. It was just like, hey, I think I like this. So we're going to do some fan art of her. <laughs> A little less wholesome, just you wait. Um, Curtis Town Citizen says, hey man, hello dude, how you doing man? Uh, I love your tutorials. They've helped me get better in my art. Thank you very much for saying. But I was wondering if you could do a tutorial for sitting down the side and back view for anime girls. Yes. Um, cool. Sorry, I'm joking there. That is absolutely part of the list to do. Um, loads of uh, relatively basic, simple stuff, but from a number of angles so that you can really get your head around how to break down these shapes. Like, uh, I'm not kidding when I say that we've been sitting on this incredibly long to-do list of tutorials for an incredibly long time. Now's the time to start scratching it all out. I think, uh, now I've still got tablet reviews and things like that. Just the odd one or two here or there. Um, but um, I'm just trying to work it out. Oh, I, I should have <laughs> I should have thought of this in my own time. But I think we might have to do uh, more than just one tutorial a week. Um, otherwise, I'm just never going to get through this massive list. Uh, every now and then... We might just have a week where there's a couple tutorials, one on a Wednesday maybe. Um, if there's not other stuff, but I'm also... Hey, leave it to me. Leave it to me. Come on, I'll work it out. Tenchi says, um, I will use some anime... Oh, you're quoting me. I will I will use some anime titty if it makes you pick up a pencil. Then after that, you might genuinely realise that you love drawing. Yeah, <laughs> that was me. Uh, God, that's so accurate and I love it. Hey, Tenchi, I'm pleased. I'm pleased. Yeah, that's the vibe. That's why you often see me moaning about YouTube being an asshole because... I'm not the most family-friendly uh, how to draw channel out there, but I am completely safe for work. I'm just a bit spicy. You know, there's no nipples on my YouTube channel. Uh, I keep everything as friendly as possible. I'm just not scared to use the booba to get you into drawing. I'll, I'll use whatever tools are available. No fear around here. Jojo says, I'm so glad the mad lad is back. Hey, man, I got acquitted. I'm sane again. A doctor said so. Would you consider drawing Neliel or Halibel from Bleach? Yes, I would consider it. Uh, also, I love watching your gaming videos. <gasps> is... Sorry, I just went a bit high-pitched there. Is Bleach back? I think I'm really, really out of the loop. Somebody said that they're, they're starting up Bleach again. And I'm assuming it's nothing brand new. It's still based on the manga. But they're just picking it up from where the anime stopped. I don't even remember where the anime stopped. Probably the end of the Eisen arc, surely. That's the most normal place to do it. So what's after that? Oh, in fact, it just goes into... Oh, no, there's... Uh, <laughs> I've just remembered the Fullbring arc. I'm so sorry. <laughs> do you remember the Fullbrings? Anybody remember Bleach? <laughs> well, that's Bleach, old man. Don't worry about it. Um, so it's the uh, it's the Quincy Archer stuff, isn't it? And the actual end of Bleach. And then, do you know, I don't even know what the hell was... Anyway, look. <laughs> it all got a bit weird and kind of subjectively just strange. Also, One Piece. I'm still about to read the Wano Kuni arc, where they get to Wano country. They've just landed on the shores. Uh, there's a lot of industrial pollution there. Um, it's got the guy who can read tarot. So he's part of the worst generation. He appears to be in charge of the local area. Don't know anything else about it, but people have told me it is one of the better arcs. And then apparently there's the arc after turned out to be even better than that. Mate, One Piece is just... I don't, you don't need to hear it from me. One Piece is an incredible manga. Um, too much filler on the anime, but other than that, bloody hell, bloody hell. I wish I got the best. Um, Takor Gefruf says, uh, remember the refractor field pr protects her. So having less armor is not a problem. Oh, Takor. So it sounds like you know a little bit about the actual mechanics behind the armor of the uh, sister superiors of uh, Warhammer. A refractor field. Mmm, I did not realize that was a thing. I thought they had their armor, which was kind of like power armor, but maybe not as strong. Because they're not, they're not fully biogenetically enhanced like space marines, are they? They're more just religious sisters who you really don't want to mess around with, who are super tough. So they're kind of like, I don't even know, they probably have different stats. But then again, now there's the new Primaris space. Do you know what I have... <laughs> I have no idea what's going on in Warhammer. There's Primaris Space Marines? I need to keep reading that Imperium magazine. Um, because I've got the kind of beginner's set that slowly builds up your collection and tells you more about the world, issue by issue. Um, and now, I, uh, now I'm so behind. I got, yo, I got another uh, bag in the post just today. Hear that crinkle, crinkle? 
Um, when you get Imperium Magazine, like they send you like six issues that are pop and you just get it as a, like a lump sum through your door. So I am so behind on that magazine. We've got a lot to do. Mega Mega Minis, guys. Links below. Subscribe to everything. Come on, help a brother out. Um, but uh, yeah, I need to learn a little bit more about the mechanics behind it because I do want to actually draw another Sisters of Battle piece. Um, I'd like to just do a little compare and contrast between the Painter Render method for the one that we've done last episode in DWM148 and then something a bit more like we're doing for Shen He now where everything's got that kind of slightly Korean feeling soft blend desaturated lots of shadow highlights sort of vibe with loads of glassy surfaces hmm, so we'll see i'm just sipping some more water one moment <clears throat> guys thank you very much for hanging out and commenting along if you're listening to this bit somewhere in the middle of a video um where you know it's rare for everybody to vibe along to the whole thing but if you can hear me right now you are the hardcore crew thank you so much for vibing along chilling out what are you doing what artwork are you working on right now? Are you working on some creative projects? What recommendations do you have? Reading, anime, video games, whatever. Let me know. Let me know. Also, hmm, is it worth doing any Dark Souls fan art? There's an unfortunate amount of spider ladies in Dark Souls. Uh, so far, I've come across two, which is too, too many. Uh, Keylag and her sister, or is it Quelag? But um, maybe, maybe there's gold in Venvar Hills. We'll see. Uh, anyway, what's going on? Uh, hey, hey, that's just reminded me of a joke. <laughs> Sorry, I've just reminded myself of a joke. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, what did, what did uh, the woke, why, okay, got it. <laughs> this is not worth your time. Why did the gender neutral American head out into the 1800s Midwest? Why did the gender neutral American head out in the gold rush because there's gold in them stroke their hills them stroke their them there preferred gold nouns them there clap clap anyone okay well look that's off the, look that's just off the top of my chest that's uh anyway you'll get a better one dwm live 150 you get one better joke than this i'll give you the uh i'll, I'll give you some of the classics like the Alaska Pipolini. Oh, mate, you're going to love that one. Uh, Gabby Johnson says, I'm glad to see the man without a plan is back. <laughs> she just summarized my entire YouTube career. <laughs> God damn it. Yo, lovely to have you guys. Uh, Mima Man123 says, Hey, Mikey. Hello there, MM. Do you think you can make a how to do reference from pictures video i just got into warhammer 40k myself and i would like to try drawing my figures like the primary space marines because i don't know how to paint them so i'll just do it on paper yeah <laughs> i like your attitude hey i just got into warhammer and then you take a look at the figures and you realize how incredibly small and detailed and fiddly they are and you're just like yeah let's go back to the sketchbook don't worry about it um yeah now, I have done an old tutorial video on breaking down references into basic shapes to then be able to rebuild them up to do your own work and your own characters. Um, but how to get like a, a nice kind of collage of key things to reference for your own artwork and put things together. I may not have the best method. I have an incredible number of reference folders um, on my hard drive where I just subcategorize loads of different stuff. Cowgirls, demons, extra busty schoolgirls, interesting clothes folding, uh, musculature guys, musculature girls, uh, action poses, all that sort of stuff. And what I tend to do is I just kind of like spend 15, to, excuse me, burping. I spend about 15 to 20 minutes just chilling out, scrolling through the folders before I do a certain fan art. So like at the moment, whilst recording this, next on my game plan, hopefully, is to do the character from My Dress Up Darling. So before I actually start live streaming that, um, I will spend 20 minutes and I'll go through the schoolgirls and material clothing folder, anything with like interesting bikini shots, just to find a few different things that I can kind of amalgamate into an interesting version of the character for a little bit of fan art. Um, but yeah, um, it's, uh, it's definitely something that I can make a video about. The reason why I'm talking so much about your question right now is I'm really just trying to get my head around what would be the main focus, because there's breaking stuff down into shapes, there's seeing stuff that it's in front of you and deconstructing it so that you can rebuild it 
and having like a, a better technical eye for it versus when you're trying to come up with a piece and you're kind of collaging all these um ex external bits of info that you're going to input into it as well uh yeah so there's two different types of videos to kind of uh, address on that one uh not only human says uh well i guess i am the resistance i hope all is well mikey i love putting uh on a good dwm whilst i draw yo everybody get your drawings going thank you very much for saying dude i always want to make an art suggestion however i don't watch or play any anime or games so i can never really remember the names of characters with any good design but today all of that changes <gasps> you have my attention read more there's one character that i've seen floating around off and on that i finally remember the name of Minamoto no Reiku from Fate Grand Order. Oh, that's what the GO stands for, for Fate Go. It's Grand Order. You have just answered an earlier comment question for me. She's got a really extreme shape uh, that I think you might enjoy. Okay, one sec. Do, do, do. Minamoto no Reiku. Control C, open a new tab, Google. Images. Ah. <gasps> This character. I have seen this character everywhere at some point in my life. Um, and I've never quite been able to nail down what series she was from. I always thought that she was from a different anime. I didn't realise it was Fate Grand Order. Who am I thinking of? I thought she was from this anime series where it's like it's like it's like an anime series where a guy is trapped in a video game, except he's the Dark Lord bad guy. And there's like, a, oh, no, maybe the lady in that was wearing like a wedding dress and she had horns. But the wedding dress has like a golden spider web on it. But I thought this character, anyway, long story short, she's freaking gorgeous. I love the design. I love the curves. A lot of good booba to hip and spandexy purple out. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not start drooling on the microphone. Yes, long story short, that's an excellent suggestion. Thank you very much. I'll leave that tab open. Always stay well. Keep up the good work, mate. And cheers. Sip of tea. <gasps> Unfortunately, brother, my mug is empty, for my tea is gone from earlier. However, I shall have some water. That's that. That's that good production value you get these days. One sec. Mm. Delicious. Um, Marcos Jose Gomez de Santos says, uh, Suarez Arte Sal Optimas. Optimo. Yo, gracias. Uh, gosto do ser jeito de ensinar, mas sem saber o que diz now da. I understood two thirds of that. Doop de do. Let's go into translate. Yo, saludos desde England, amigo. Gracias para el. But I don't know sometimes what you're saying, and so I don't understand. Hey, no entiendo. Ah, lo siento. Pero uh, no hablo español muy bien. Y uh, I must uh, studio a bit more Portuguese, which isn't quite going to do it for you either. So, uh, hey, one day we'll put on some translates. But thank you very much, Marcos, for following along. Uh, the Psycho LP says, uh, when the world needed him most, the king returned. Uh, that's not it at all. When the world needed Mikey the most. He left. Now we are back. Now we are slowly returning. Uh, and Darlo98 says, given that you're considering going back to Genshin Impact, I have to suggest that you do Bal or Shogun Raiden. Well, we've got Shen He here, but who's Bal and who's Shogun Raiden? Darlo. We're going to just do a little bit more uh, Googling real quick. Oh, really kind of similar. You guys are recommending the sexy purple ladies right now, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's the one who pulls the sword out of her booba for some reason. What is even... What, what is the law? L-O-R-E. What is the law between the sword from the boobs? It's very Lord of Light, you know, quench the blade upon my breast sort of thing. Uh, Tax IRC says, now that you've watched JoJo's, I'm curious of your favourite Joe and JoJo. Also... I've been trying to draw an OC of mine. I'm looking back at your tutorials to find a solution, but it's not going well. Oh, what are, what are the challenges that you're having with your OC work? What is my favorite Jojo? Battle tendency. Jojo. Uh, which Jojo is for? Is it Jotaro? The older guy. Um, he's the granddad in Jojo's Stardust Adventures, but when he's younger, he did battle tendency against the Pillar Men. That is still my favorite Jojo. Stardust Crusaders is like the big benchmark of Jojo that everybody knows. And it is wild, but like I say, it's just too long. Um, and by, by the time you get to the end of it, I'm just like, oh my God, it's been a million years. Um, and Jojo's part four, 
I did like the fact that it was a break. After all that wild traveling to Egypt stuff, part four is just like, hey, there's some weird stuff happening in this town. Here's some little weird adventures. And I did like. So, so I'll tell you what I actually really loved about the end of part four is when the guy, when the bad guys, no, no spoilers, but when the bad guys technique develops and it becomes a time space technique when he's able to reverse stuff um for like a couple of episodes that affects the intro to the actual series so when the intro theme song plays he kind of like warps it and reverses it that was a lovely touch um something something kira 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 is the name of the bad guy now i forget his full name but um yeah um i, I like that enough uh, there's an invisible baby. I don't. Know, look, I can't even remember what episode the invisible baby happens. But I just remember at the very, very end, they were just like, "By the way, nobody adopted the invisible baby." <laughs> and just like, what? Okay, that's staying with Grandpa. Um, and I like the way it wrapped up really, really well because he ended up in the horrible dead corridor with the other girl and the dog. So I thought the closure was nice. Um, obviously it's not the one that everybody loves, but it was like a nice relaxing break after how wild um, Stardust Crusaders was. But yeah, after everything so far, I'm still all about that battle tendency. Um, it's not perfect, but um, it just it has way more fun and character compared to all the others. And the, the others are wildly vivid as well. That's just an IMO. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Um, we'll end up with one of those conversations again about how I think the original Final Fantasy VII simply did smarter things with the storyboarding because they had to do more with less compared to the remake, which was a fully envisioned version of events, which is in fact maybe not the vision that we had slowly built up in our own memories as we'd filled the gaps that the PlayStation couldn't actually process and handle. But now that we can see it all put together, we're seeing it's actually a really weird, boring mishmash of extra content that nobody needs. All the best bits about the Final Fantasy VII Remake are Final Fantasy VII. And all the incredible boring bits is pretty much every goes nowhere, let's do some more hunting around for cats bullshit that nobody really cared about. There, I've said it. However, the battle mechanics are amazing. Half the music's really good, as long as it's not the stuff you find on CD, in which case it's a crappy jazz remix, because the FF track has been remixed too many times over the last 10 years. It's one more shirt in the wash too many. But overall, I did still like the experience, and at least it's kind of fully validated by the alternative dimension split path reality thing that kind of happens at the end. But yeah, they definitely overplayed stuff way too much in the remake overall. Wow, that came out of nowhere. Why did I just start talking about that? We were talking about JoJo's. Oh, that's it. I was just talking about me having an opinion. I'm so sorry. Okay, none of you asked. None of you deserve that. But here we are. Iman Abdul Rashid says, yo, let's get Mikey to 1 million. <gasps> Yo, let's go! I've missed the DWMs already. I haven't been able to follow the live streams at Twitch for a long while. Hey, no worries, dude. And I hope that things are doing fine these days. Now that we're getting back on track, they are. Thank you very much for asking. Also, um, this is the fifth year of following. The fifth year! And I'm finally in my final year of architecture school. <gasps> hey, man, that's incredible. And that makes me feel really old. God, I started doing this sort of stuff in my late 20s. Holy shit! Keep on rocking, dude. Also, as a waifu to draw... Camilla from Fake Grand Order. Mate, why is everybody going on about Fake Grand Order? <laughs> that might have been a bit, a bit high pitched. Yo, I'm going to go into the editing software. I'll, I'll lower that one by a few octaves. Uh, fake. No, I'm opening another tab. Camilla from Fake Grand Order. <gasps> oh, she looks kind of evil and hot. Oh, she looks like a dominatrix. Yo! Whoa, that's a fascinating design. I'm not as in love with it as I am Minamoto no Reiku, for obvious reasons. But yo, there's a hell of a lot of stuff going on with Camilla. Mm, Camilla type moon? I don't even know what those words mean. Oh, she's an assassin type. <gasps> she's like Nina Williams from Tekken 3. Mm. Okay, excellent. Thank you for the suggestion, dude. Um, Dice Punk says, Holy crap, your new channel is uh, most of my hobbies. Hey, what's <laughs> Awesome, dude. Uh, I'm still, I'm so behind on all my big game plan. This is a problem when you just do things solo and you don't like working with other people. You do struggle to fit in all your dreams. Uh, Mikey, just get a whole team behind you. No, I don't. No, I won't. Uh, what am I, Jazza? I'm not building a five-story custom-built apartment production complex. I'm just a dude in his uh, office room, just vibing. 
Um, yeah, I'm still working on the Batman Lego. We are halfway through my uh, 1989 limited edition Tim Burton Batman Batmobile. Come vibe live, we're going to do that. That's going to be a time-lapse video I'll put together for um, the Megaverse channel. I downloaded Fruity Loop Studio, FL Studio. Um, I need to learn how to use it. I'd quite like to make my own electronic music or electronic-ish music to go with some time-lapse and stuff um, for that channel. Um, I'm still using no copyright sounds for most of all the good stuff on the general time lapses. But it'd just be nice to kind of like make your own sound to theme along with some of the chat. Hey, look, this is me just pie in the sky and some ideas. Uh, Ghost says, hey, Mikey. Hello there, Ghost. So glad to see you again. Lovely to have you back, dude. And the other sane custodian says, if you want a very good anime that will make you cry and feel like your heart has been ripped out. <laughs> look, you, dude, <laughs> I'm like half a sentence in. And you are not selling it to me at all. Hey, man, if you want to be really, really sad, I don't know if I do, mate. Um, but it's also got some really gritty action. Watch Violet Evergarden. Oh, doesn't look like much, but that anime is actually my all-time top number one. And every other opinion is wrong. Oh, and if you do watch it, don't you dare loot her. Absolutely lewd the Violet Evergarden. Isn't Violet Evergarden a euphemism anyway for a lady's never regions? I'm, I've heard of it. I can't put a face to it though. Let me just uh, give it a quick, quick lagoog. Violet Evergarden. Oh, this character looks really familiar. She's got really beautifully rendered hair, lovely eyes. Okay, am I getting confused? This lady from Violet Evergarden, I thought she was a character from a fighting video game series. Isn't there like an anime fighting video game? One sec. What am I thinking of? Anime. Oh, this is this is great content, Mikey. Fighting video game. He's not even reading the comments. It's just Mikey on Google. Guys, welcome to M O G. Another episode of Mikey on Google, where I just Google things live and record it. Anime fighting video. What's it called? It's uh, it's like Tekken. Uh, not Scargars. Guilty Gear? Yeah, I thought she... Wait, 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 one sec. Guilty Gear. Let's type that correctly. Images. Is this what I'm thinking of? So basically, I follow a live streamer who plays a bit of Guilty Gear when he's not playing uh, Dragon Ball. Yeah. Yeah. So I think there's some Guilty Gear characters which are crazy hot. And what I'm getting at is I kind of got confused with the Violet Evergarden character. I kind of thought she was a Guilty Gear character for some reason. Anyway, I actually really, really like what I'm looking at for Violet Evergarden, just because her face and hair rendering in every single shot is really delicious. Um, and yeah, I really like the illustrative style. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's going to go on the list later. Good suggestion. Thank you very much. Guys, get in the comments with your suggestions. Come on. Come on. Tell Mikey what's going on. Update me on what I've been missing out on your lives. Um, because we're running out of time. Boney says, hey, Mikey. Hello there, Boney. Happy to see that you're not dead. Yo, thank you very much. Every day I'm not dead. I am also happy as well. Um, what do you think about part six of Jojo? Dude, I've still not got there, but it is next on my list. Guys, with that, I must sadly confess we come to the end of this DWM episode. Thank you so much for vibing along. If you've been saying something to me in the comment section, I've missed it. Just copy it and paste it into the comment section of today's video. With any luck, I'm going to catch it next time around. We're going to cover a whole load of stuff um, live for DWM 150. For 151, I'll read all the comments through of this one because the live one's going to be a little bit different. Uh, make sure you follow the other channels, especially if you want the live VODs. It's lovely to be back. And although I haven't done anything to prove it yet, technically we are back making videos again. Thank you so much for being so welcoming. And I'm going to see you guys next time. Take care.